After you have your, your portrait on cardstock, you are going to decide what color comp complementary colors you want to choose. So it's either going to be red and green, purple and yellow, or blue and orange. I'm going to start out with blue and orange. I'm going to use orange tints, tones, and shades for um, my background and blue tints, tones, and shades for my face. So I'm going to start out with making um, using blue and black and white to make gray tones. So I want to try to match this gray color first. That's my lightest one besides the whites. And you are going to make that gray. So whenever you make a gray, you want to take white first, make a pile of it. I'm kind of scooping it over to the side. And then you're going to take a tiny bit of black and mix it in. I try to mix, trying to keep my um, pile in the same section. I don't want it all over the place because that will make it dry out too fast. So I try to push it all to the middle, mix, 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 push, 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 until it is matching close to the color that's on my face right now. Now we are not doing a monochromatic gray tone picture, we're using color. So I'm going to use my non-mixer for my more complicated areas, which I chose blue because I'd have to make an orange, which I will do for my background later. So I want to use my gray, it matches pretty close, and then I'm gonna take my blue and I'm gonna mix it into there. This is called a tone of blue. So we wanna mix it until it actually looks like blue with the gray. And anywhere where we see that tone, we are gonna carefully paint it in place. So once it's all mixed up and it's on the tip of my brush, you wanna use a small detailed brush. You don't want it globbing, so you wanna kind of scrape and roll. So that's just a nice pointed tip. You're going to carefully work from the top to the bottom, painting nice and neat over the top, so just where you see that gray tone. So I don't push my brush down really hard. I lightly use just the tip of it. When I need more paint, I'm going to make sure I don't have too much on there. And I'm trying just to stay on the gray. Now, you, you are a beginner painter, so you might not paint as easily and as quick as I do. That's all right. It's all about practice and learning how to mix. Um, I know that our pictures are very posterized, but it gives us those sections that we can use to paint in those areas. So you can see that I have a rather complicated background. You want to try to make sure that your background is a little bit more simple. And I'm just going through and painting all of my gray spots from top to bottom. Why do I start at the top? It's basically so I don't run my arm through what I've been working on. Now it's hard to decide what's background and what's my body. So you can kind of just make a good judgment here of what you think is in, actually in the background or what might be the outline of your head. I'm gonna go in and do this area here. And you're gonna work through the whole painting. Don't paint the background with your, um, your portrait or your face color. That's going to be its complement. So I will be doing all of my grays right here in an orange tone to do the opposite of the color wheel going through. Why do we use opposites of the color wheel? They um, work well together. They kind of fight against each other. They're great in design concepts. They also help mix darker ver versions of one another and we can talk about that on a different time when we're doing any painting and art um, because we are just doing tints, tones, and shades of the complement for this one going through, trying my best to stay within the lines. It's really important you don't push down too hard on your brush and then your, your tip stays there. But if you push down, it squashes your brush and you're gonna get uh, uh, out of control. So really going through. Now, you might take an entire classroom just to do a tone. You might take another classroom just to do a tint. You might take another class period just to do a um, shade. So just make sure you're taking your time. So as I go through doing the hair, um, I'm going to go to my next tone. You can see I have black for my eyes and I have white in part of my hair. 
I'm going to now make a darker gray. And I don't even have to make the gray first if I don't want to. I could just keep adding black until it looked a little bit darker. But just for um, learning's sake, I'm going to scoop over some white. I'm going to grab a whole bunch of black. I'm going to make a charcoal gray. Trying to stir it in the same section. We made four levels, so you'll have tints, to two tones, and a shade. So here is um, a really dark gray. Now I'm going to add my blue in. Mixing, mixing. I still want it to look blue, so I don't want it so dark that it doesn't look blue, because that, that will almost be our shade. My shade will be almost a navy color. So here I have this. I'm going to go through. I have too much paint on my brush, so I'm going to just scrape a little bit off on the edge of my water cup, and I can actually go back and use that too at times. So around the eye, I want to be really, really careful. Now let's say your, your other tone was still super wet. When you touch paint, wet paint to wet paint, sometimes it'll run. So you want to make sure your brush just is wet enough and you can get water off the same way that I dragged into that tone. So up in my hair, I still see some black sections, so I have to make those stay put so I can put my navy shade in there. Different type of a way to make a self-portrait, for sure. Um, but it also is teaching you brush control and just color mixing using those shades, tints, and tones. When it is cleanup time, you are going to be required to wash your own brush, clean out your cup, water cup, and place your dry, or your paintings on the drying rack. You always want to put them to the back side of the drying rack, as far back as any open area will let you, and then you are going to, oops, I just made a mistake and got a little white on mine. I'm just going to brush that off, use my finger to wipe because I don't want to miss, um, miss the shape of my eye there. So even I can make mistakes sometimes going too fast. Um, drying rack all the way in the back. Make sure not to lift any shelves where paintings might be. You're always going to drop the shelf down for the next person if it is full. So there is my tone, darker tone. Still got to do blacks, still got to do whites. I'm going to continue working on this. And then the next video um, will show you all of the ones that I had. To get this color here, it would be white plus blue, and this color here, you're going to do blue plus black. You always start with the darkest color first because you can't really lighten up black. So um, to make the shade, you're going to put blue first with black dot. To make the tint, you're going to start with white and put blue inside so you don't um, lose control of your tints, tones, and shades. So really quickly make a tint of blue to show you what I mean. There's a baby blue. And to make a shade, I'm going to do blue. It's its normal color, but then I'm going to take a tiny dot of black and make that dark shade. So now I have tints, tones, and shades of all of the above to paint in to my portrait. And it, it should if you use enough control, it should still look like you. All right, let's put them on the drying rack at the end. 